Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's Faves. And today I want to talk about Swedish composer Dag Vieren. There he is. Here he is. Two discs on CPO containing symphonies two, three, four, and five with concert overtures numbers one and two and the ballet suite from Oscars Ballen. Now, Viren, let's see, where were his dates? 1905 to 1986. He had a long and fairly productive life. Fairly, I say, because he didn't write a great deal of music. And the music he did write is never going to be very popular, with the exception of that wonderful string serenade. You know the serenade, the one with the finale that goes, yum ba dum bum bum ba dum bum bum ba dum bum ba da 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 yum ba da dum bum bum ba da dum bum bum ba da dum bum ba da 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 yum ba da dum ba da 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 Oh gosh, it's wonderful, right? That little march at the end, it's a delicious work. Absolutely delicious work. He was a, a composer of great character and personality, but his expression tended to be somewhat aphoristic, if that's the word. You know, he, he, he was given to short-breathed, very compact, not a note out of place, extremely high levels of craftsmanship. And for that reason, I mean, the symphonies here, well, symphony number two, these are wonderful. It's wonderful to see what's happening. It's 30 minutes long. Number three is 22. Number four is 18. And number five is 22 again. They're short works. They're first half of the concert works. That's why they don't get played very much. It's not that they're not ravishing. They are. Or that they're not wonderfully put together. They are. In fact, I think they're exquisite. I think they're some of the most beautifully crafted symphonies in the 20th century. I really do. And these performances are splendid. They're wonderfully recorded. They're with the, the, the Norrköping Symphony Orchestra and Thomas Dalsgaard, both discs. Um, and I, I fell in love with this music the minute I heard it. I just adore it. But the problem is, the problem is that these pieces are just too damn short. And that's true of just about all of his music. I, I went and, of course, you know, the minute you hear something you like, I go and I try to get every recording I can. And I got a whole bunch of them. And he's got concertos. Yeah, okay, they're 15 minutes. He's got chamber works. Yeah, they're 12 minutes. <laughs> you know, they're tiny. They're, 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 they're miniature in length and in duration. They are not miniature in expression, and they are not miniature in density, in the density of the musical argument. And these late symphonies give you a wonderful way to hear that, to hear what he was all about. Because the second symphony is, which is the longest, which is half an hour, it's a regular symphony, is a beautiful Nordic, Scandinavian, sort of nature poem type piece. It's recognizably from that part of the world. You can tell immediately where he's coming from. And the, the tunes have that delicious modal pastoral quality. The woodwind writing is just, just charming. It, it, it's wonderful, wonderful stuff. I mean, the climaxes are unerringly built. The, the structure is so intact, so beautifully worked out. But at, with each symphony, it's like watch, it's like watching, uh, looking at a series of Mondrian paintings. You know, have you ever seen his, his, his entire progression? If you go to the Guggenheim Museum, you can see a wall of Mondrians. And it's fascinating because, because you know, you first you see normal sort of landscapes and portraits and still lives. And then you begin to see, you know, the figures being broken up into into geographic geographic geometric shapes and and simple lines and then you know the actual shape of the character the picture the pictorial element becomes gradually absorbed simply into the lines nothing but the lines until eventually all that's left are lines with you know colors in there and they're they're both fascinating i mean the, the late mondrian is marvelous it's absolutely gorgeous but it's totally it's become totally abstract where before it was concrete and representational well that's what happens in these symphonies it's the same sort of process the musical equivalent of that is that initially he writes rather long breath tunes um, that you know are recognizably you know expressive melodies 
And then he starts working with shorter and smaller fragments or motives and working those motives into the fabric of the music more and more intensely until when you get to the end, you simply have a a a, a magnificent, it's so easy to follow, just like Mondrian's lines. You just see them and there they are. You, you can follow the motivic workmanship of this tiny idea as it goes through each movement of the symphony. And it's marvelously rewarding because he's not being off-putting or annoying about it. He's welcoming, welcoming you in to follow him on the journey. And whether it's a representational journey or a more abstract or intellectual journey, it's just as easy to follow and just as much fun. And absolutely, I, I was just enchanted by the whole process because you really can see where he's going. But you have to appreciate that. You have to care. You have to know that, you know, it's worth it's worth watching or listening to him take this journey, and you have to be willing to go along with him. And so that's that's where he comes in. That's why he's never going to be a terribly popular composer. He really requires listening. I mean, active listening. But the best way to understand where he is and then to listen to the rest of his output, like I said, it's not large, is to, is to take a gander at these beautiful, beautiful symphonies and follow them. Start at number two. I never know what happened to number one. He probably withdrew it or something. But start with number two and work your way up to number five. And you'll be able to follow his evolution in style. And after that, you know, eventually he just stopped writing music because he figured he, he'd said all he had to say. He got to the point, you know, where, where the music itself became, you know, the ultimate in the process that he eventually evolved. And so he stopped. He was done. And I give him full credit for that. I always give credit to people who know when to quit even if it's not necessarily to their advantage financially or, you know, popularity wise or whatever. He could have gone back. He could have done something else, but no, he followed a path. He found his truth. He expressed it and he stopped having done that. And that I find to be one of the most admirable qualities that there can be in an artist, particularly a musician. So Dag Viren, Give him a try, my friends. Really, you're going to just love this stuff. It's fascinating if you just sit down with it and, and welcome it into your life. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.